All right. Day four. Day four. People are loading in now. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Day four. We've made it this far. Halfway point. Check. Um, it's been four days of uh, madness and fun and mischief, and uh, we're so happy to have you here today for a really amazing panel. We're really excited about this one. I am personally a big fan of ambigrams. I know Misha is into them too. And uh, you, this name will sound familiar, but do you know the, the man behind the myth? We're gonna find out today. Um, just a few quick housekeeping things here um, uh, before we get started. Uh, we're seeing some amazing submissions, but we want to remind you to upload your original image to us, not a screenshot of the social media. So if, if we ask for you to post something on social media, go ahead and upload the original image. You have a much better chance of making it in the book. Um, and if you're going for getting in the book, make sure you read those submission guidelines. Make sure you read those rules and those commandments. Um, those are going to give you a lot of tools and sort of guidelines on how best to approach the list on how best to create within the auspices of this game. I just wanted to see if Berta knew if I say auspices again. Um, so we are seeing incredible stuff. If you haven't done an item yet and you're just doing the Zooms, maybe consider doing an item. Try one of our challenges. Try to push yourself, push your boundaries. Um, and, you know, check in with your team. Make sure they're all taking breaks. They're sleeping. They're hydrating, they're meditating, whatever it is you need to refresh and recharge, uh, make sure you're doing that because uh, we have a few more days of this to go and we don't want anybody, you know, getting the yips. I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to say that word. Okay. Uh, I'm not allowed to say that word, but don't get them. Um, and the only other thing is if, uh, if you, Post it on social media. Make sure that you're posting something on social media in terms of submissions that is allowable by the item description. We're seeing a few violations of commandments where people are posting their work where it is not sanctioned by the item itself. Uh, and above all, please be kind to each other. Be patient with each other. Be patient with Gishbot, with our gnomes, with our support slots, with all the magical creatures that run around here. You don't have to be patient with Misha. It's fine. You can be not patient with Misha. Um, you can be, go ahead and let him know everything you want to, just, just overload him. That's what I'd say. Um, well, okay, enough of me talking. You're here to see a, a gentleman who has changed the game literally and figuratively. Um, he is an amogram inventor and professor. He uh, is an artist and an independent graphic designer, uh, a writer, a, a typography professor at Drexel University. He is best known for his anagrams, most notably in Dan Brown's best-selling uh, novel, Angels and Demons, which is an incredible piece of work. Um, and we're gonna be talking about where his influences come from and it's gonna take you through the nature of anagrams. If you're not familiar with anagrams, prepare to have your mind blown is all I'm saying. So John, Mr. Langdon, Professor Langdon, can I call, can I call, can I call you John? Yes, you can, I hope people will. Okay, John, uh, I'm so excited to introduce you to everyone here. Um, we make a lot of art and we uh, bend and break a lot of uh, laws of physics and uh, we, we are trying to wake up the world. So I feel like you're perfectly suited to speak to this particular audience. Sounds good. Well, let's get started. I'm gonna pop out and just, and just ingest all of the information you have to give us. Um, so if there are any questions for John, we maybe we can hold those till the end. Uh, we'll, we'll do some stuff in the Q&A. So use your Q&A feature. Um, and uh, yeah, John, take it away. Well, thank you very much. And hello to all of you who are wherever you are this morning. Uh, and thanks to Gish for inviting me. I imagine that some of you know about ambigrams and perhaps some of you've never heard of them. So um, to get started, we can show this which is an ambigram as uh, there you go. Uh, any, anything can happen with ambigrams, but that's an ambigram. In 1965, there were no health food stores, yoga studios, martial arts tojos, <clears throat> or new age bookstores 
So when a friend of mine coming from his philosophy class opened a book and showed me the yin yang symbol, it was the first time I had seen it. It's, it, it struck me uh, hard. I felt like I understood, uh, in, understood it in all its implications immediately, which in retrospect seems unlikely. But I doubt that there has been many days since when I didn't think of it at least once. It has become my personal North Star and represents my understanding of the world around me. Around the same time, I first saw the amazing illusions created by M.C. Escher. What I learned from both Yin Yang and M.C. Escher's work uh, was that for every idea, there could always be an equal and often opposite valid point of view. I was an English major. My genetic heritage had given me equal passions and abilities for both verbal and visual communication. I've always been a word guy and I've always known that I was an artist. I began trying to do the same thing with lots of random words and the names of my friends. It didn't seem to have much meaning to see the word Thursday or the name Charles. You're ahead of, you're ahead of me. <laughs> back, 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 one more, I think. Nope. <laughs> um, and I'll keep reading. You'll catch up or find my way, find your way somehow. It didn't seem to have my, no. Nope. <laughs> uh, back to the beginning. Okay, before that. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, it didn't seem to have much meaning to see the word Thursday or the name Charles from different points of view. But as I kept creating what I then called upside down words, I got better and better at it. Throughout the 70s, my graphic experiments with yin and yang developed into a personal philosophy. When I finally read a book about Taoism, I found out that the Chinese had developed the same philosophy several centuries ahead of me. Back then I was insecure about the idea of being a fine artist. An artist friend of mine suggested that I make stuff using whatever materials and skills I felt comfortable with. Using mostly wood and general purpose shop tools, I constructed dimensional works that represented novel ways of seeing yin and yang and the relationships between it and the normal bell curve, wave pattern and spirals. <clears throat> Working on my letter drawing skills at the same time, I began to think that there should be some connection between the symmetry and reversibility and the meanings of those upside down words. I began to work on words that were shared by Eastern philosophies and Western physics. A few years later with about 60 of what we now call ambigrams, I went looking for someone to publish a book of them. Over the previous 15 or 20 years, I had become a professional freelance graphic designer, a specialist in logo design and custom typography. Over the course of that period, a few other people had started creating ambigrams. Among them was Douglas Hofstadter, author of Goodall, Escher and Bach. He sent me to his editor and she agreed that a book was a possibility but that I would need to write a text to accompany the ambigrams. What I wrote was essentially my version of Taoist philosophy. Eventually, Wordplay was published in 1992. Wordplay didn't sell well, but among the people who brought a copy was a mathematician named Richard Brown. He, like other scientists I'd heard from, was fascinated by other science, but was fascinated by symmetry of all sorts. He showed wordplay to his son, Dan, a singer songwriter who wanted to name his next CD, Angels and Demons. His dad asked if I might be able to and be willing to create an Angels and, Angels and Demons ambigram. I was able and I did. 
Shortly thereafter, Dan gave up the music business and became a novelist. After two books that had not sold well, he decided to name his third novel, Angels and Demons. <clears throat> and would I mind if he used the ambigram on the cover? I didn't mind. Soon he decided it would be cool to incorporate some ambigrams within the story. He commissioned me to design an ambigram of the classic elements, earth, air, fire, and water in a cohesive cluster and, in, <clears throat> and individually as well, and the word Illuminati. The ambigrams became significant points in the structure of the story. Angels and Demons was published in 2000 and didn't sell well either, but it came to the attention of another publisher who thought it could be built upon to create a more successful book. He was right, and as you know, The Da Vinci Code became a global bestseller. Building on that success, the new publisher also republished Angels and Demons, and that too became a huge success. <clears throat> The two books, as you also know, became successful Ron Howard, Tom Hanks movies. And suddenly, by the way of the book and the movie, millions of people all around the world were introduced to ambigrams. Googling the word ambigram today yields about 908,000 hits. Long story short, since the early 2000s, most of my design projects have been ambigrams. Most of those have been tattoos of something of personal significance and logos for quite a few small bands. And John Mayer. And what do you know, once ambigrams became popular, a number of ad agencies and corporations decided that ambigrams did have some commercial value after all. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a fun ride. Ta-da. <laughs> wow, John. It, I, I, the, the, the big thing for me is that you are using art to get people to open their minds up a little bit. And that's so powerful. That's, uh, the, the bottom line for me is that ambigrams virtually require to take a different point of view. Yeah. And, and much like Escher, I mean, you're, you're asking people to walk through their own perception of things and try to see beyond that, which is something, you know, that's one of the hardest things we had, you know, there are opportunities obviously with other things other than art where we have to try to work to understand another's point of view or try to see another side of, of a story. Um, but, you know, this is an artistic exercise that helps us do that like immediately. And it's so cool. Um, are there any ambigrams besides, I mean, Angels and Demons is, is a great example, but are there any ambigrams you're particularly proud of? Uh, at the beginning of this talk, we showed the word philosophy. Mm -hmm. That's at the core Love of it. the whole thing. And uh, it, it's, it's such an easy read. Uh, nobody's ever had any trouble with it. And it, I think it's my most popular ambigram of all. And... Um, so when you do an ambigram, is it just uh, a lateral in terms of up down? Can it be, I mean, are there other functions that you can do within an ambigram that way? I, I haven't included any in this talk, but um, way back in the beginning, one of the earliest ambigrams I was attempting was the word starship, um, mm. uh, hoping to um, gain the attention and maybe even sell the ambigram to Jefferson Starship. <laughs> uh, which eventually did work out. Cool. Uh, but at the time, I was trying to make it read upside down and right side up. And I kept getting close and it was very resistant. And one day I just, I don't know, I can't remember what triggered it, but I thought maybe it's a mirror image <laughs> instead of a rotation. And, I tr and it fell into place immediately. Um, there are other uh, other forms. Uh, one one I call totem ambigrams. Um, if a, if a word and, and those are like uh, Rorschach images in that kind of symmetry. Mm. Uh, and if um, 
if the arrangement of letters in a word taken as a whole horizontal entity won't work, uh, sometimes I can break the, the word into lines of one, two, three, four letters that each of which will perform bilaterally like so that. So cool. Um, and, and end up with, uh, with a vertical ambigram. Um, those tend to be more difficult to read because you kind of have to interpret each part of a word um, in sequence and, and then sort of put it together um, at the end. Um, but they make very, uh, very powerful uh, icons. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, and we've got questions coming in. Do you mind if I ask you a few of those from the audience here? Uh, not at all. I'm ready. Okay. Awesome. Um, we've got one question. Are you ambidextrous? Uh, would that be beneficial in any way? Uh, I don't know if it's beneficial, to <laughs> uh, but yes, to some degree. Um, uh, w when I was a kid, I was, I batted and pitched right-handed but I could do pretty well at both of those with my left mm -hmm. hand. I never really tried to become fully uh, equal on both sides. Um, in soccer, I kicked equally well with my right and left foot. In racquetball, mm -hmm. it, it, when I was playing racquetball in the 80s and uh, I got tendonitis in my right wrist, I just switched to left-handed and it worked equally well. Um, and from that point on, I could play either light or left-handed and sometimes would switch in the middle of a game. Yeah, that's so cool. I am not. I, I, my father is left-handed and I'm always was like putting my watch on, on the opposite hand that I was supposed to, I don't know. It's, you know, it's such an yeah. interesting like uh, arbitrary thing that we like assign sides to the body and then we just like try to remove sides out of cultures and you know, it's a wild. Yeah, I have a feeling that my dad may have been left-handed Mm -hmm. uh, but but growing up in the early 20th century, if if I'm right about that, he was forced to become right-handed. Yeah, yeah, that was, which was a common practice. Um, right. we, yeah. we have a few more questions too. I think people are really interested in the process of creating these. You know, would you mind going into how you go about drawing an ambigram or or the testing that you do, or or does it start from a concept of, uh, you know? You know, we, what I'm really fascinated by too with amograms is, is sort of Taoist, you know, equal and opposite parts to it. How do you go about creating an ambigram conceptually or is it concept first or is it mechanics first? Um, I start just by, as I said in my talk, just playing. I, I Play. write the word out very roughly I, and I write it upside down right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, which at first I thought, well, that saves me all the trouble of turning my pad of paper <laughs> upside down. But actually, I think it, I think it um, spurs my mind into upside down thinking. Um, so it's just scribbled out upside down on a page. And then I start looking for uh, <clears throat> similarities between the first and the last letter. Mm, okay, gotcha. <clears throat> Pardon gotcha. Me. Um, and I work, I work very roughly at first. I, uh, all I want to do is see if I can force the letters to cooperate with me. Yeah. yeah sure. <clears throat> um, Make sure you hydrate, John. We're telling everyone else to hydrate. You can definitely yeah. hydrate. This is a long hunt, you know? Ah, I, I was going to say, I don't think I have water here, but I do. Yes. Excellent. Thank Thanks for the prompt. Yeah, no um, worries. And if if it works like it, if it seems like it's working, yeah. Um, and and by the way, I don't think my success rate is much higher than fifty percent. Mm, um, good to know. And um, I mean, given given that, I've been pretty fortunate <clears throat> in the commissions that I've gotten and and what I needed to do for wordplay. Yeah. Um, but I at that point I have not cared about aesthetics at all mm. but once I have it um, brutally forced into cooperation then I start to refine I'm drawing more carefully I'm drawing on my um, my my many many years of being deeply involved in typography um, even though I may end up creating some pretty bizarre 
letters in my ambigrams, I have a huge respect for conventional typography and, mm. and, and the kind of fonts that have been around for 500 years, nothing too, uh, too contemporary or campy. Um, so I, I'm pushing to make these, um, these newly made up glyphs. A glyph is a term that covers letters, numbers, punctuation, every, you know, all of those things. But in my case, I'm creating a glyph that has to re perform as two different letters. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and, and, once, and once I'm starting to refine those, um, one glyph might require uh, <clears throat> it might require a uh, a thick and thin letter style, and another mm. one, another one somewhere else in the word might need to be a mono weight, a, a single weight letter. And I have to, I don't, I don't have to, but I choose to. <laughs> uh, I choose to try to make uh, bring those together somehow. I yeah. I need to coax I need to coax all the different glyphs into a cohesive style. Mm. Um, I, and I insist, on, uh, I insist on readability and attractiveness. And if it doesn't have that, I don't count it as a successful ambigram. And, and for an ambigram, it's, it's, which we're going to get into the challenge that we're giving the Gishers in just a moment um, for item five, it's, it's, it's uh, both right set up and upside down. Is that accurate? That's, well, that's the, you know that that's like the, the classic typical ambigram, but as I said, as we covered, there are other forms. Great. Well, um, why don't we share? Do you have any other projects or anything? You are you still doing commissions? I know you're teaching at Drexel, but is there anything else you'd like to talk about? I do. <clears throat> I do. Um, I don't have as much work uh, as I did um, ten or fifteen years ago, but I'm I'm theoretically retired. Um, yeah. Uh, but I, I do still get uh, a couple of logo projects and maybe an ambigram or two uh, every month. Um, cool. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm working on a couple right now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, who's ready? Uh, raise your hand if you're ready for the, uh, by the way, I don't know if we covered this. Your last name, did Dan oh. Brown name the character after you? Yes, he did. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, although in um, in in more recent um, interviews, he says, "Well, I, you know, he, he's from he's from um, New Hampshire, and the, uh, the founder and first governor of New Ham of the colony of New Hampshire was John Langdon, um, mm -hmm. and." And there's probably a couple of things uh, in Portland and, and nearby uh, that have the name Langdon. So he, he's kind of spread out the, um, uh, the antecedents a little bit. Got it, got it. Well, we, we're, we're honored to have a Langdon in the house today and to learn about Amram. So let's, uh, let's give our Gishers uh, a very important, a very interesting, very mind opening uh, item, shall we? All right, so your item number five, image or video. Flipping your perspective can help you overcome a challenge. Create an ambigram featuring two words that help you regain balance. The first word should be something you struggle with and the inverse word, one, uh, that brings you peace. Bonus points if you also get it tattooed, permanent or temporary tattoos will both be accepted due to COVID. So here's your, Tattoo item, everybody. Uh, go forth and tattoo thyself if COVID safe. Um, you can also find John Langdon at johnlangdon.net. Uh, you'll definitely want to uh, explore John's work for this item. I would recommend it. Um, it is time for, and this is probably one of the most interesting tattoo items I think we've ever done. Um, you don't have to tattoo it, obviously, but it's bonus points if you do. And we also, again, mentioned that you can do it as a temporary tattoo due to COVID restrictions. Uh, tomorrow, bright and early for all of us here at Kish, 7 a.m., we're going to be talking to explorer, author, and expedition leader Belinda Kirk. She's a fascinating human um, who is in the UK. So 
these hours are going to be a little bit less friendly for the Pacific coasters and a little bit more friendly for our uh, European and, and uh, rest of world friends in all of the various territories and regions that we are in. Um, so it's going to be uh, a really interesting and and um, a hopefully inspirational talk, if unless whoever's hosting it decides to fall asleep and stay asleep. So we're gonna we're gonna be there at seven a.m. and I we hope you will be too, John. Thank you so much. This is such a cool. I mean, anything that we can do to open our minds, be a little kinder to everybody, and see different perspectives. You know, we had some things that happened yesterday where people were asked to look at different perspectives and. A lot of Gishers came right out and said, I see this other point of view. And it was really interesting to see people work with that. And so hopefully uh, we can get people uh, working on your uh, kind of design and art so that we can help do that a little bit more. Sounds good. Good luck to everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, take care and go to johnlangdon.net, everybody. Yeah. By, by the way, um, in, in your, now that I, I've just heard your uh, ambigram challenge, um, I, I suggest going for fairly short words and giving up early. <laughs> Find another word. Uh, yeah. If the first words aren't working for you, keep trying other possibilities. Um, and eventually you may find something that works. Oh, perfect, John. Yeah, see, exclusively here, tips on creating amigrams. You're gonna want that. If you didn't watch the Zoom, you're out of luck. You should hear, you should be here if you're the tips. So uh, this video will be available on YouTube uh, for, for viewing in the hunt list. So this video will be in the hunt list afterwards for any of you, your other team members that want to, uh, to check it out. So that will be up shortly along with the item copy, which will be up in just a few moments. Thank you, John. Thank you, Berta. Very thank good. You. And thank you guys once again. Good luck to everybody. Take care.